Hey Kyle, what do you want for Christmas this year? Um, I think I'm gonna ask Santa for some legs. Okay, number one, that's a little weird. Number two, uh, Santa's not real. He isn't? Nope, sorry buddy. Then who's that guy who snuck into my room last Christmas even left me a bottle of whiskey under my pillow? That was me! Uh, Donnie, that was really sweet! That wasn't whiskey! Ho, ho, ho! <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to Semi Elite, I'm Susanna Collins. So as we all know, this NFL season has been completely all over the place. Teams that we thought were going to be terrible actually turned out to be okay. Oh hey Washington! And teams that we thought were going to be good have actually shit the bed. What's up Ravens? And as a whole, this NFL season has had more plot twists than a dang episode of Game of Thrones. You know nothing, Jon Snow. So today, I'm gonna tell the tale of a couple NFL teams who have had completely different stories this season and are going in opposite directions and who coincidentally meet up in week 15. I'm talking about the Jaguars, woohoo! And the Falcons, wah wah. So let's start with the Falcons. Once upon a time, there was a team in Atlanta whose 2015 campaign started out with so much promise. A 5-0 start to the season, a new head coach, some of the best offensive weapons in the league. It was all going so well. Well, until it wasn't. Fast forward to today, the Falcons have lost six in a row. They have essentially no shot of making the playoffs and will likely spend the majority of the postseason applying copious amounts of aloe vera to their asses after getting brutally spanked by the Panthers. So what went wrong? I'll tell you. For one thing, that offense is a hot mess. Matt Ryan is making boneheaded throws and getting picked off in the end zone. Their pass protection is non-existent. Their running game is an absolute disgrace. And this is a roster that features guys like Julio Jones and Devontae Freeman. What a waste! It's like getting all dressed up for a date and then the dude takes you to Chili's. It's a true story. Number two, mentally, this team ain't strong. Too many penalties, too many turnovers, and they're coming at really inopportune times. They had six penalties and four turnovers in that game against Carolina alone, and this has been a serious trend during this losing streak. You can't win games when you keep beating yourself. It's not how this works. Number three, for whatever reason, whatever Dan Quinn is selling, this team ain't buying. On Sunday, he was preaching the need to stay poised and maintain composure, yet his D-line coach is getting into a shoving match with his own player. Hey, Dan, I don't think they're getting that message. Mm -mm. All right, so moving on to a happier note, the Jacksonville Jaguars, who have basically followed a completely opposite path than the Falcons. They started off the season one and five and were basically left for dead, but after a few statement wins, including a 51 to 16 thrashing of the Colts, suddenly they find themselves in the playoff conversation. I told you this NFL season was fucking weird. Yes, indeed, Jacksonville has a shot at making the playoffs, and here's why. Number one, a surprisingly potent offense. All right, so the name Blake Bortles doesn't exactly strike fear into the heart of opponents, but he has put together a nice little season for himself, throwing 30 touchdown passes and setting the franchise record. He also gets to throw to arguably the NFL's best wide receiving duo in Allen Hearns and Allen Robinson. The latter is tied with Tyler Eifert and Odell Beckham Jr. for the most touchdown catches on the season with 12. Boom! Number two, red zone efficiency. So what used to be a weakness for the Jags is now actually one of their strengths. They went six for six scoring touchdowns, went in the red zone against the Titans, and then on Sunday against Indy, they scored touchdowns on all four of their red zone possessions. Hey Atlanta, I want to take some notes. Number three, and this one is important, they play in the shit show that is the AFC South. Man, this division is really giving the NFC East a run for its money in the NFL's biggest tire fire. The Jags right now are only one game behind the division leading Texans who are six and seven. Hey, almost 500, good for you. Now they'll have to win their remaining three games against the Falcons, the Saints, and the Texans and get a little help from the Titans and the Dolphins. But I'm telling you, there's a chance because this is 2015 when totally average is totally good enough. Last call, y'all. All right, last call. So this last call goes out to all those fans of those teams that have already been eliminated from playoff contention. So to the fans of the Ravens, the Chargers, the Browns, the Titans, the Lions, and the 49ers, here's to you not having to watch your team rip your heart out of your chest every single week. Hey, there's always next year, right? Well, probably not next year if you're the 49ers or the Browns, if we're being realistic. But still, cheers to you. Hey guys, that is gonna do it. A friendly reminder, there are only 10 shopping days left before Christmas, so don't blow it. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next week.